Morning. Welcome to the service for Clement Parish Church for Sunday the 20th of December, the fourth Sunday in Advent. My name is Gordon Palmer, minister here, and as well as myself taking part in the service, um, a number of other folk are today, and we're looking at different aspects of some of the work that we've been doing through Advent and looking forward on into Christmas. Today we're going to be lighting the fourth candle on our Advent uh, ring, the round ring of the, where the, the circle being uh, representative of God's eternal love, God's endless love for us, the evergreen leaves of the new life that there is continually in and through Christ, and the candles representing different features, different aspects of uh, the story of um, <clears throat> Advent, of hope and of peace and of joy, and today the candle of love. Isaiah says, therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son and will call him Emmanuel. And the Bible tells us that it's because God loved the world so much that he sent his son, Jesus. He cares about us and wants to provide for us. The angel who came to Joseph to tell him about the baby that was to be born and how this baby would be called Emmanuel, God with us, because God loves and God will come alongside. Jesus came to show us that God is a God of love and something of what that love means and the sacrifices he made for us. So then, remembering that we meet in the presence of a God who loves we share together. And it's good news, this <clears throat> hope and peace and joy and love worth celebrating. So, come on and join the celebration. Let's continue our worship in prayer. Let's pray. Loving God, we come to you this day full of excitement and hope for what we prepare to celebrate in the week ahead. Even though things are different this year, even though we might not be together, we still come excited about celebrating the birth of your son with Christians all across the world. We come with joy in our hearts, with sparkle in our eyes as we come to worship you. In this moment, we ask you to forgive us for things that we've said and done and thought that have upset others. We come to you recognising that as forgiven 
people we may see where we have gone wrong. As loved people, we may learn to love others. As free people, may we bring hope and freedom. As we make known the hope and the joy and the love and the peace that's found in your Son alone. And in his name we pray. Amen. Good morning. The reading this morning is from the Gospel of Luke. It's Luke chapter 2, verse, reading from verse 4 to 14. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and the line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger, because there was no guest room available for them. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today, in the town of David, a Saviour has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be the sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to those on whom his favour rests. Amen. Well, the service title is um, A Very Different Christmas is Still Christmas. And it has been a very different Christmas. COVID-19 has made the whole of, or almost all of 2020, a very strange, a very unusual, a very different year. And for many of us, Christmas itself is going to be quite different. We've made our usual routines, have we not, over the years about families meeting together for meals, the sending of cards, the lights, the TV programs, and, and so on and so on and so on that we've been used to. And some of these might well be there, but some of them are going to be very, very different. But of course, the Christmas that happened first, the birth of Jesus, that was very different as well. It was unusual for there to be a census. That's why Mary and Joseph had to travel to Bethlehem. There was a scandal of Mary being pregnant before she and Joseph were married. It's the angels bursting onto the scene at night time and uh, frightening the shepherds maybe, and, and, and then giving them the, the, the good news. Very different, very unusual. And so is that part about these uh, wise travelers from the east coming and following a star. And then they don't follow the star exactly, or it seems to take them to the wrong place, for they end up, first of all, in Herod's palace. And, well, maybe that's not so strange. Maybe if somebody was told today that a king of kings was being born in the UK, that then I suppose maybe Buckingham Palace might be the first place that somebody would look. And so they went to Herod's Palace, but no sign there. And in fact, it was one of the wise scholars of the time who said, no, you'll need to go to Bethlehem. It's supposed to be there that the Messiah is born. And so these travelers went to find this king of kings born, not in a palace, not fated by this, that, and the next thing, but somebody rather who was born in humility and sleeping in a feeding trough. Christmas actually is quite different. It's remarkably unusual and different, and perhaps this year, with the differences that we have, Maybe we can take the chance to have a better look, a closer look, a more realistic look, a more meaningful look. What was going on and why was it going on? 
We've been trying to highlight some of the features of the story and the windows that we've had around St. Leonard's, 24 of them, of our Advent windows. And we've also been um, trying to recognize it for some folks. Maybe there's fewer meals, fewer outings, pantos, theaters, and stuff not happening. And we've had some Christmas gift bags for folks who might be m missing out. We're going to have short items uh, reflecting on these Advent windows and on the, the bags. And then that follows by what might be a slightly unusual style of reflection for you about how the Christmas story is different about how it goes from mess to Messiah. Because the very different Christmas that we have is still Christmas. Because Christmas is about God coming into that mess. Christmas is about what happened, what God has done. So enjoy as we hear about the windows, our Christmas gifts, and what Di says to us about mess. I did the Advent window. Um, why did I do it? Um, partly because I was asked. Um, partly also because um, I've got loads of time. It certainly wasn't to show off my um, kind of creative skills. Um, I studied accounting at uni and I don't have any creative skills at all. Um, it was actually quite challenging. Uh, what did I learn? Um, that I was quite right not becoming a primary school teacher, but uh, it was actually quite enjoyable. Um, and I think it's a, it's a good thing to do because in the time where people are locked down in their, um, in their homes for quite a while, it gives them a reason to go out. Uh, and they can go around and look at all the, the various windows and um, there may be a prize, I don't know. But um, yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a good thing to do. I might even do it myself once I get the, the, the clue pages off the, um, off the email. But I'm um, glad I did it. And uh, if, if you're looking for it, I've done the, um, the, the, the crowns window. So uh, anybody who knows where I live, look for the crowns window. Hi. Uh, when Gordon approached us about this uh, outreach venture, um, we thought it was a great idea. And then he said it would be for 300 people, approximately. That was a bit more of a challenge. I uh, thought, how on earth are we going to manage to um, find all these 300 items for the bags in quite a short space of time? But, as usual, claimant team all came up trumps. Um, when we put an appeal out for um, volunteers, um, the response was wonderful as usual and um, the we had volunteers to go searching around for Christmas cakes as you were only allowed to buy so many at a time and on the whole people did not take any payment for uh, collecting these uh, which is very generous of them um, we approached the, the local co-op and the staff in there um, they donated 250 bags of crisps and they paid for them out of their own pockets, which was really nice. Um, and Elaine over in uh, Tesco um, gave us a very generous voucher and some boxes of uh, celebration sweets as well. So they always are good to support any event that we have. Uh, and then we had Thea coordinating a group of 13 people who were busy um, beavering away making face masks, face to face masks uh, to put in the bags um, and people have been just so generous with their uh, financial contributions and people handing in little angels that have been crocheted with sweeties in them to go in the bags and people have just been coming forward and saying you know what is there anything I can do um, which has been great. Um, we've got teams beavering away decorating the bags and filling the bags and uh, going to be delivering the bags to the nominated people. But uh, all in all, it's been a, a, a great thing to be involved in. The Christmas Story how would you explain it? How would you picture Christmas if you could frame it? The nativity. 
right? Shepherds watching their flocks by night. Wise men trekking whilst tracking a sat-nav starlight with Mary and Joseph, humbled by the sight of little baby Jesus tucked in tight. That's Christmas, right? Propped up with straw and reeds and a tray of animal feed and cushioned in. Hey, I know it sounds quite cosy and nice. Reality was, there was no room for the little guy on that Bethlehem night. He kept in a cradle. Animals as roommates. I'm not trying to pick holes in the state of the place. I'm just saying the way they were staying was just short of space. We talk about entrance. His birth from a dress meant Jesus literally arrived in the mess. But less about the birthplace and the state of the floor. I mean, there's more to the Christmas story than the deck of straw. Flip forward eight days. In the temple, this little guy's the reason for praise. From the lips of a guy called Sim who's in his old age. For years, Sim waited in anticipation, but then the old met the new. My eyes have seen your salvation. The newborn Jesus from messy manger to a passing of the baton just eight days later. Seeing the mess of the birth comes a new age. And what's more, the birth was foretold in a mess age. Which brings us back to the cast. At the nativity set, you see, it was a message that guided their stable footsteps. An angel postman popped round, said Mary'd found favour, a save the date declaration, you'll give birth to the saviour. He'd be son of the most high, born through the spirit, heir to David's throne, his reign without limit to Joseph. Call him Jesus, he really will bless, cause he came to save people from all their mess. To the shepherds, he's here to rescue. That's why he's come. The reason for good news of joy, he's the one. As for the wise men, they figured the news. They gave gifts and paid homage to little king of the Jews. See, God brought the message, so they entered the mess to see Jesus' arrival at the nativity set. But let's back up a sec. See, this rhetoric rings a bell. Back in the day, Isaiah waxed lyrical about a future, Emmanuel, God with us, one who be central to the story of forgiveness. So zoom out from the Christmas postcard, a message 700 years prior. He'll be a light to the searchers that spread salvation, says Isaiah. See, the angel's news, it wasn't new. In fact, these nativity messages echoed God's promises right through the ages. These messages read Jesus, speaking hope to the earth, predicting his arrival centuries before the birth. Thing is, when Christmas comes round, maybe there's a danger that we go Pinterest with Christmas and just pin up the manger in the nativity scene. It's like rating a whole film by watching one scene or thinking you know a novel because you had a quick look. So you get the whole story by skim reading one page in a book. And what I said before, I bought him born in the mess and the deck out of straw. Maybe it could also be a metaphor for all the mistakes, all the messiness in life and what that creates. All the stuff in this world that just doesn't sit right. There was a reason he was born on that first Christmas night. He was born in the mess to make the wrong right. He's the message of hope. Because out of the mess, saw God news birth that will certainly bless. Frame the stable, sure, but don't miss the picture. It was a message declared since the beginning of scripture. A war in the mess, but there's only one victor. A heel bruised, but be good news for sure. The very promise became flesh in that dead goat of straw. See, from the mess comes a message and there's none that is higher. Because what follows the mess is I-A-H, mess, I am. Spirit and a virgin's name To the anguish
shun the shame of scandal King the savior of the human race But the skies were filled with the praise of her Shepherds listen as the angels tell Of the gift of God Come down to man At the dawning of Emmanuel King of heaven, now the friend of sinners Humble servants in the Father's hands Filled with power and the Holy Spirit Filled with mercy for the broken man Yes, he walked my road and he felt my pain Joys and sorrows that I know so For the world's transgressions, he was suffering to save the lost. He fights for breath, he fights for me, losing sinners from the chains of hell. And with a shout, our souls are free. very different Christmas is still Christmas. It is different, isn't it? This year we can't have this, we can't go to such and such, we didn't have see so and so. But, but God is here, God is with us, God has entered into the, the mess, God who embraced the scandalous, God who is in the ordinary things of life, God is here. I mean, was, was Jesus born or was he not born? Did he come or did he not come? That's a question. And, and not just the testimony of millions of Christians over, over the years and millions of Christians today, but also the, the witness of history is, yes, he did come. He lived. He died. He rose again. The evidence is strong. So given that, then we still have a living saviour. That's why we did the Take a Good Look series. It's Finding out about Jesus, the whole of Jesus' life, death and resurrection that matters, not just the birth at Bethlehem. So he did come. 
Is he still with us and does he still deliver? Well, yes. Again, that's our belief and testimony. Not the same thing as we always get what we want and we always get it easy, but there is a saviour who has stooped, a saviour who has come into the mess, a saviour who has been in the ordinary and who still through his Holy Spirit meets us in the ordinary or in the, the good and the messy things of life. And he offers us not just eternal life in some distant future, but the presence of God here and now among the ordinary, the everyday, the comings and goings, the hurts, the joys and everything else. So Christmas is here. It is still Christmas despite all the restrictions that we've had for 2020. It's still Christmas if Jesus is with you. Is that that? I'm not asking do you believe in him, but do you know him? Do you walk with him? Is he a part of daily life? Because that's what the gospel offers, and quite frankly, that's what we believe church is here for, to, to point and, and help folks find that Jesus and walk with them and we'd love it if anyone wanted to get in touch with us and say how do I find out more we would be willing to love to sit down and read a gospel section by section bit by bit with someone let us know because there's nothing that can take away the reality of God with us COVID hasn't managed to do it and nothing Nothing at all is able to do that. For God loves, God reaches out, God embraces us in the mess. God is with us. Emmanuel, it's still Christmas. During the month of December, um, we've had 24 different households reading chapters of Luke. There are 24 chapters in Luke. Um, and so that's worked out really nicely so that we can have that finished before Christmas. And the reason we've done that is so that we can take a good look at Jesus um, and look at the person that we're, whose birth we're celebrating at Christmas. So um, they've been on Facebook and they've been on our church website. Um, before COVID, we just really had that for members of um, and friends of Claremont Church, but they've been able to be spread a bit more widely um, because of COVID and because of lockdown and because people are using social media a bit more. Um, we're very grateful to everyone who's recorded these for us and we continue to pray that they'll be used by God. Thank you. Towards the night before Christmas, when all through the house, not a creature was stirring, not even a mouse. I don't want a lot for Christmas. There is just mm. one thing I need. Uncle Cookie. Uncle Cookie. Oh, who's that? Who's that? It's Dad. Who's that? It's Jack, your nephew. Uncle <sighs> Cookie. I can hear you, but I can't see you. You need to switch on your video. The video? <coughs> how, how, how do I do that? It's the button. With the ca it's the camera with the button, sorry. Uh, camera. Uh, uh. Is that you, Jack? I, I, I don't have my glasses on, so uh, is it really you? It is me, Uncle Cookie. I've missed you. This Christmas, when school shows have been cancelled and pantos are not on, we invited children to our Christmas crackers event yesterday on Saturday and for that we asked children to send video clips of them singing Christmas songs and this was part of the event. Crack for a bit, 
to born Jesus with their sweet head. The stars in the night time looked down where he lay. And the little, little Lord Jesus was sweet born there he. On Christmas Eve at 6.30 p.m., come and see the show. It's a recording of the event Christmas Crackers with children singing with puppet scratch and us all building a Chris Tingle together. You're welcome to have your Chris Tingle made at home while you watch it on Christmas Eve. We're looking forward to seeing you there. Have a great evening of fun with the kids at Claremont. Silent night Holy night, all is calm, all is bright round yon virgin mother and child. Holy infant, so tender and mild sleep in heavenly peace sleep in heavenly peace dear god thank you that you are with us and that we can come to you when we are in need and that you listen to us we pray for the elderly who are lonely, that they would have friends and family be there for them when they feel distant and isolated from others. We pray that they would know you are with them. We pray for the people receiving the bags from church and that they, will, they would know that your love is behind them and find blessings in what they receive. We also pray for people who are going to be alone this Christmas, possibly for the first time, that they would be cared for by those around them, including us. Help us be aware of those who are feeling lonely and to be thoughtful and caring for them. Help us to be grateful that we have our church family during this time. We remember those who have lost friends and family to COVID-19 and pray that they would have the space to grieve, but also have people around them to support them. And that this time would not be filled with unwanted sickness. And we pray for people who are living on the streets as the weather gets worse and colder, that they get support from the community and would feel loved this Christmas and know that God is there for them. Please help, please help us to remember them and to be generous in giving to them. We pray for people less fortunate than us, that they would know God and that we would be there to help them in their time of need and help us to recognise the blessings we have and be grateful for them. We pray for young people, especially those struggling with mental health, and that they would know peace in God, and that they would know you love them. And we pray for those who will have family around them this Christmas, and also those who find themselves stuck at university, and that they will still find ways to have fun. We also pray for the government who need to make choices when it comes to COVID-19, that they would have wisdom and make the right choices. We pray this all in your name. Amen. Well, we hope you've enjoyed uh, the service this morning, um, been slightly different format for us and looking at different aspects of what we've been doing over the Christmas uh, season. As when I mentioned that the um, Advent windows, uh, there was a competition there for folks to, uh, to enter, young, youngsters to enter with the um, phrase, which was Jesus, the light of the world. And the, <clears throat> we made the, made the draw earlier on, and the first prize um, is for Charlotte Alexander, and the second prize is for Alex Marita and Boris's son Alex, and we'll be in touch with uh, Charlotte and with Alex soon 
to um, give them their, uh, for their prizes for the first and second in the Advent Windows uh, competition. Um, also, we had asked folks who were entering the uh, competition to say which window was their favourite, vote for the one that they liked best. Thank you very much for doing that. And the winner was window number nine, I think it was, um, on Nest Drive, Mrs Jackson. Congratulations. And there'll be a small prize for Anne Jackson for having the most popular window. Thanks, as I say, for being able to join with us. And as I say, there are a number of things still to come over the Christmas season. Um, the be an early evening service on half past six on Christmas Eve, which will be seeing more about the, the Christmas cracker, cracker event and there'll be a, a focus on that. Great time for, for families to join with us then at half past six on Christmas Eve. We will also be doing a usual watch night service, which um, again is at half past 11 at not in the evening on, on the 24th. And also on Christmas Day at half past 10 in the morning, we'll have a Christmas service all of these um, are online. Um, usually after the Christmas morning service, um, here at half ten, folks have stayed for a while and, and wished one another a happy Christmas, maybe had some, something to drink and something to eat together. Well, we're going to do that, except you're going to have to have your own eats and your own, your own drinks, your own snacks, whatever. Um, so after the service on Christmas Day, there'll be a link to, to join us on, on Zoom where you can come and meet uh, whoever else is around. Wish them happy Christmas. Come and show us your new jumper or your latest gizmo that you've been given um, on Christmas Day and admire one another's Christmas presents or whatever. So that's, that's on Christmas morning itself. The <clears throat> praise band have um, put together a, a CD called Christmas from Claremont. It was one of the things included in the Christmas bag that have gone out. There are still some spare copies, um, uh, with some extra copies made. If you wish a copy, the best thing to do at this time of year, because um, the office is going to be closed after Monday, um, Otherwise, the best thing to do is simply contact me um, at the man's, either email me, minister at claremontparishchurch.co.uk, or telephone me at the man's, 248-526, to say if you wish um, another copy. We're suggesting a, a donation of £5 um, for the CD. It's got six songs and a short Christmas reflection message on it. Um, so I say, do let me know. Don't think, oh no, I can't bother him. He's too busy with all these services. Because they're online, um, most of them have actually been finished and, and recorded by now. And also they have been done um, because for those who um, do not have internet access, um, we've made um, the Christmas services available on DVD. So if you know somebody who would appreciate having our Christmas services, um, they're not on the internet, um, but they do have a DVD player. Again, the best thing to do is to give me a call, 248-526, or email me and let me know, and we can get a, a DVD to anyone who wants to join our Christmas services um, in that way. These, I think, are the notices that I have just now. Um, and we'll conclude our service with a hymn, See Him Lying on a Bed of Straw, and then bless, bless one another in the words of the grace. Mm -hmm. 